Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about the Partridge Pea. If you asked me to make a list of some of the more interesting plants native to North America, the Partridge Pea would have to be on that list. It resembles a cross between a fern and a regular annual flower that you could buy at a garden center. And it gives it a quite a curious appearance in that the flowers are somewhat hidden by these small compound fern-like leaves and it has one of the most unique seed dispersal mechanisms in that it flings its seed far and wide, which I'll describe in detail later. But make no mistake, there's more to this plant than appearance, as it's arguably one of the best plants for wildlife. In addition to pollinators, deer, rabbits, turkey, grouse, quail, and other game birds all make use of this plant, whether it's eating the foliage, the seed, or using it for cover, and that's why the partridge pea is a great plant to have in any food plot, and is often included in those. But this video will be a complete profile on this unique plant, including what is the partridge pea and its benefits, how do you ID the plant and what growing conditions does it like, how to grow it from seed, save the seed, garden uses and wildlife associations, and then we will review. So I hope you'll stick around and learn all about one of the more interesting plants you can encounter in North America. What is the partridge pea? The partridge pea is an annual wildflower native to North America. The native range is basically anything east of the Rocky Mountains, so it covers a huge swath of the continent. When I say that partridge pea is an annual, I mean it's going to die back every winter and have to be regrown from seed every spring, which really isn't a problem as we will see later. A member of the pea family, it grows just about anywhere with full sun and well-drained soil, blooming its bright yellow flowers starting in the summer and continuing right up until early fall. You can find it in roadside, ditches, meadows, open woodlands, prairies, anywhere where it can get full sun and well-drained soil, just about. For benefits, pollinators absolutely love the partridge pea as you could clearly hear the bumblebees buzzing crazily in the beginning of this video. My patches of this plant are busy. You may not notice the flowers right away, but you will hear the buzzing of the bumblebees on quiet mornings. Improved soil. The partridge pea is a legume and is nitrogen fixing, so it basically makes its own fertilizer and will look good in extremely poor soil. And it also has a small tap root that helps break up compacted soil and as it, especially as it decomposes over the winter. Appearance. The unique appearance of the partridge pea make it stand out when planted in groups. The contrast of the fern-like leaves and bright yellow flowers mixed with the bees going crazy make everyone take a second look at it. And wildlife. This plant is particularly suited to feed turkey, quail, grouse, and other game birds as they like to eat the numerous seeds that this plant will produce. And growing this flower on your land can help attract more of those by being a food source. Now I do need to note one drawback. I know I just went through benefits, but I want to get this, at least mention this up front. The partridge pea will self-seed prolifically in formal mulched flower beds. I want to just mention this now. I'll talk about it in more detail later, but I just wanted to be up front. I mean, you can really see just how much it spreads here as I've got plants that are growing and blooming in my lawn. So, yeah. Partridge pea will grow roughly two feet tall in full sun with well-drained soil. The round, hairless stalk will be smooth and have some branching, and it'll be light green in color, turning to a reddish brown as it gets older. The leaves of the partridge pea are compounds and alternate along the stalk. Each compound leaf is gonna have 10 to 20 leaflets that are roughly a half inch long by an eighth inch wide. They're going to be medium green in color. The one inch diameter, five petal yellow flowers will begin blooming in summer, usually around like July for me in zone six, and they'll continue basically through September, maybe into October. After the flowering is done, pods will start to develop that contain the seeds. Initially, they're going to be light green. They turn brown as the seeds mature. As the pod dries out, tension will build along the length of the pod. And once certain fibers are broken from shrinkage, the tension is released, causing the pod to open up and twist itself into a corkscrew shape, flinging the seed. And it's really cool to open the pods. Um, it's fun, not just for kids. I like to do it too. But let's see that again in slow motion. And if you guys are enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does help my channel out, and I really do appreciate it. For growing conditions, the Partridge pea prefers full sun and it can grow in average moisture to dry conditions, so it's drought tolerant. Uh, really, the soil needs to drain well, though, and not be too wet. 
It's really not picky about the soil type. You know, sandy loam, clay loam is fine, as long as it isn't too wet and it drains well. But this plant should not require any supplemental watering, fertilizer, or anything like that. Just plant it in conditions that it likes or at least tolerates and it will take care of itself. And all the information I'm sharing with you today is available at an article on our website at growupbuilder.com. I will put a link in the description below to that. So if you need a quick reference later, you can go there rather than sitting through the whole video. And also, if you are unsure if you have well-draining soil, I do have a video showing you how to test that and I will link to it in the cards in the top right in the description below. It's pretty easy to grow partridge pea from seed. The seeds do need scarification though as they have a hard outer shell and it can benefit from a short period of cold stratification. Scarification is getting rid of that shell and the seeds really just need a little sandpaper for that. Just rub the seed on sandpaper until you see the color change and it's pretty much done. I actually used this as an example in my scarification video because the seed's easy to scarify. As far as cold stratification goes, you can either winter sow the partridge pea or use the refrigerator. But since the time is so short, you probably didn't, don't need to do either one. If you just plant scarified seed in early spring when the nighttime temperatures are still getting down to, you know, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, something like that. And for planting depth, the seed should be a quarter inch to a half inch deep and kept moist. The seeds will germinate once daytime temperatures get pretty warm. But if you want to learn more about winter sowing or cold stratification or scarification, I have videos on all of those topics, which I will link to below. This is what a seedling of partridge pea looks like uh, probably about a week or two after germination. There's several sets of true leaves. This one is ready to transplant out into a garden. If you wanted to just direct sow partridge pea seed, you can do that in the fall or winter. Just have some uh, disturbed soil and scatter the seed, and then walk on it or drive on it. Just know that some of the seed will be eaten by birds and rodents though. And I will put a link to the seed below if you're interested in trying to start some. And partridge pea seed is incredibly cheap to buy too. You can buy an ounce of seed for just a couple of dollars, which is roughly 2,000, 3,000 seeds. To save seed from the partridge pea, it's really easy. Just gather up the pods when they're brown, but before they open up and put them in a brown bag store that bag out of the sun in a cool dry place for about a month to let the pods open naturally. Then you can just dump the contents into a plastic container with a lid, shake them up to release any remaining seed, and then quickly and easily separate the seed from the now empty pods. Store the seed in an envelope or a container in a cool dry place. For gardening uses, the partridge pea is an excellent choice for a meadow, a micro prairie, a wildfire garden, or a border garden. If you're making your own food plots for wildlife, you should absolutely include the partridge pea for the wildlife it will attract. But as cool as this plant is, I gotta tell you that it is not a good choice for a formal mulch flower bed. The cell seeding of this plant can be quite prolific. Each plant makes hundreds of seeds and flings them everywhere. In this front flower bed you see here, I had six plants about four or five years ago, and I'm still pulling seedlings every year. It's not a huge deal, but if you miss one, it might blend in with another plant you have, and next thing you know, it starts producing seed. When it comes to wildlife, it's easy to see partridge bees' value. Bees go absolutely crazy for the pollen, and I'm not kidding. You walk out to my little wildflower garden, and you will hear the buzzing in the mornings. It's extremely busy with bumblebees and other species of bees. The USDA also recommends the partridge pea is one of the best flowers to grow for honey production. In addition to bees, the partridge pea also hosts caterpillars of cloudless sulfur, orange sulfur, little yellow, and sleepy orange butterflies. When it comes to mammals, deer and rabbits will browse the foliage of partridge pea. It's mainly when they're young that I've seen this happen. And when it comes to birds, as I've previously said, turkey, quail, dove, grouse, will all enjoy the seeds. There's probably plenty of others too. And the foliage provides some cover to ground nesting birds as well. All right, let's review. The partridge pea will grow two feet tall in full sun and well-draining soil that is average to dry moisture. It's extremely easy to grow from seed and it's great for pollinators. It hosts several butterflies and the seeds feed numerous large birds. But it is a prolific self-seeder and so you should be careful where you plant it. I know there's some people who say you can just deadhead it, but I don't know. I tried to do that the first year and I'm still pulling seedlings out of that front bed. So learn from me, don't do what I did. But that's all I've got for you guys today. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, again, please give me a thumbs up as it really helps my channel out and I do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please try to ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And yeah, you guys all have a good one.